that the people are demanding. That's, I like that. Keep pushing, brother. Keep pushing. <laughs> like Morello showed up. Where's the fucking guitar? He said, All right, All right bro. Hold on. I'll be, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I've been to Occupy LA. I've been to Occupy Vancouver. I've been to Occupy Seattle. And I've been to Occupy Wall Street. And it's an honor to be with you in the streets of San Francisco at Occupy San Francisco today. We are now currently occupying over 1,300 cities, towns, and hamlets around the world, and that number is growing every day. <clears throat> the one thing that all of the Occupy demonstrations have in common is that we have finally identified the enemy. The 1% that owns and controls this planet in the name of profit and power and at the expense of human rights and environmental sanity. So thank you all very much for raising your voices as the 99% that has been silent for too long. The Wall Street malfeasance that has torpedoed the global economy and caused so much pain and economic disadvantage for so many people is really a crime. It is a crime that is so far gone unprosecuted. Now, if our president, Barack Obama, does not have the courage to close Guantanamo Bay, then I have this suggestion that perhaps he opens those animal cages up and puts in some of those Wall Street criminals for what they've done. I would go further to suggest that maybe we put them in those little orange jumpsuits, put some black hoods over their heads, and crank Rage Against the Machine 24 hours a day. Because history is not made by presidents or popes or kings, or queens, or generals, or CIA kingpins running dope. History's not made by nine robed men, or billionaires, or bankers. It's not made by them. Now they might throw a little money around, wondering who can be bought. Some of you might find you're cheaper, and some stronger than they thought. But I'll stand or fall right here, in my country, in my home. I used to think that I was alone. But I ain't alone no more. And so to get to the point, this gentleman was like, where's your fucking guitar, bro? This is what's going to happen. I was thinking about playing guitar for you nice people today, and then I changed my mind. I thought instead, I'm playing a show tonight, the American Music Hall, and I, con I convinced the promoter of that show to give us over 100 free tickets to hand out here for you nice people today. So I'd like for you to join me tonight as we occupy a different part of San Francisco. Yeah! Because the mantra of this tour where I'm occupying America is feed the poor, fight the power, and rock the fuck out. So will you join me, Occupy San Francisco? All right, all right. Let me put that to before the General Assembly. All in favor of coming and rocking the fuck out with the night watchman tonight, say aye. Right. Are you with me, Occupy San Francisco? I'm not sure. Are you with me? I can buy San Francisco. Right. So we gotta find some some democratic way of making sure everybody gets the tickets. I think we have about 100, 150 right now. So I don't. Need, where's my Where's my guy who's actually got him? He's right there. Okay. So if we get I, I, who Who here is in charge of like making a thing happen so it's not crazy? All of you. All right. Then make it happen so it's not crazy. And he's got the tickets. How about that? And I think we've got about 100 to hang out, hand out. And then after that, we'll do a guest list for about another 50 or so. But thank you very much for having me here. You're doing a great hey, job. This thing is going to continue to grow. Hey, and, uh, oh boy. Let's see. This is what democracy looks like. All right. Don't trample one another. But anyway, I'll see you at the show tonight. Thank you very much. Iraq Veterans Against the War. Brothers and sisters. This is the fifth Occupy that I visited. Occupy LA, Wall Street, Seattle, Vancouver, and San Francisco. I'm on tour right now, so it makes it easy to get to those different places. Uh, but this is a movement, I've played at hundreds of different protests, but this movement is a movement that's very different from that. This is the explicit class base of this is, uh, is very unique, and the fact that it's so inclusive, and I really like the, the idea of it being in 99%. Everyone is welcome, the diversity of ideas, opinions, people, you know, from, from old hippies to radical students to firefighters and longshoremen, everybody seems to be turning out families, uh, and it really seems to have a, the, the de a democratic spirit and yet a radical spirit that I really like. So you mentioned when you were speaking to the Occupy us up here that now we know who the enemy is. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, it's, uh, the enemy's been identified. I think that, that uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of 
obfuscation of, of where the problem really lies. But it is the Wall Street malfeasance and it's torpedoed this economy, the global economy. And it's, you know, those are criminal acts that have destroyed the lives of millions of families, and they go unpunished. Uh, th this Occupy movement has clearly identified that 1%, the people who own and control the world, and don't deserve to own and control the world, because they have profit and power. Barack Obama, President Obama announced that uh, they're withdrawing troops from Iraq by the end of 2011. What do you think that means? What does that mean to you? Do you think it's the end of the war? I don't think it's about, you know, 10 years too late, but it's, uh, uh, <laughs> is it the end of, is it the end of the war? I mean, if, if U.S. troops are leaving, it means they've achieved their objectives of, you know, subduing a country and making it do what America wants it to do. So whether or not the troops, you know, I'm grateful that the troops are, the troops are coming home, but the tremendous amount of, of Human carnage has been caused in their wake. Is uh, you know those are lives that never they'll never come back. You were talking about Guantanamo recently. Can you can you just repeat what you said to the audience here? <laughs> sure. Well, I mean the president on his first week in office promised to close Guantanamo Bay. He's now in his fourth year and has, has yet to do so. Uh, so uh, he clearly hasn't had the courage, or the, the the political will to do it. Uh, and my suggestion was that if we are going to keep Guantanamo open, we might fill some of those animal cages with the Wall Street criminals who torpedo the global economy. And I further to suggest that perhaps we put them in those cute little orange jumpsuits with the black hoods over their heads and crank Rage Against it's the Machine 24 hours a day. Well, that might never happen, but can you tell <laughs> us, do you think that this movement's going to last? It's going to make a difference? Yeah. Uh, Gaddafi never thought he'd be out of power. You know, uh, Mubarak never thought he'd be out of power. So maybe one day those Wall Street criminals will be behind power. I mean, yeah. But with, whenever... I don't think it's a good idea to ever put a ceiling on what a movement can do or can achieve. The fact that this movement is very... It, this movement seems like it's very unlikely to be co-opted because it's so grassroots and it's so from the bottom up. Um, and so we'll see. That's interesting, when you call the Wall Street people, you refer to them in the same way as Gaddafi or Muammar, uh, or uh, Mubarak. Those were leaders of countries. Are you saying they leave this country? Of course they do. I mean, I, I, for two years I worked as a scheduling secretary for the United States Senator Alan France in California. And while he was a very progressive person and a good guy, you know, that person still passed. He's a really good guy. He spent all this time on the phone talking, asking rich guys for money. You know, that money doesn't come for free. I mean, the, 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 the corporate control over the, not just the political process, but over the, the over power in this country is complete. You know, when we're asked to kind of you know, prod like lambs to the slaughter every four years to cast our ballot in the void for, you know, one corporate-controlled candidate who's against gay marriage and another corporate-controlled candidate who's for gay marriage. You know, like that's, those are sort of the, 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 the slivers of difference that we have to choose to see. But this movement, I think, is accurately you know, identifying what the problem is and now what the interest is. Are you going to vote for Barack Obama in 2012? Well, he hasn't given me any reason to vote for me. I mean, I voted for him the, the, the first time. And, and you know, in, in, in American electoral politics, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's often not the choice between the lesser of two evils, but the evil of two lessers. Uh, and while there was was definitely you know, this when he ran the first time he looked didn't look like any other candidate he didn't sound like any other candidate and so a lot of people were instilled with a false hope that he was going to be different than previous candidates and he's turned out to be a regular centrist democratic politician like you know, hundreds thousands of other centrist democratic politicians for him um, and the change that we want to see we're going to have to create ourselves if you don't vote for Obama then who will you vote for are you running are you going to put my name on the <laughs> I might write you in. You seem very reasonable. You have thoughtful questions. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much, too. All right, I'm going to Sound Yeah.